to lesson three of the Firebase tutorial video series. In this lesson, we're going to create our Xcode project, add the Firebase SDK, and the configuration file that we downloaded in the previous lesson here. And we're going to make a connection to the Firebase database from our iOS app. Let's begin by creating a new Xcode project. So take note that the bundle identifier that we use to create this Firebase app, we're going to use the same one in our Xcode project when we create it. So let's create a new Xcode project. I'm going to create it as a single view application. And the product name is messaging app. And the bundle identifier is going to be constructed from the organization identifier. So there's com.code with Chris and it's going to say dot plus your product name. So you can see here that actually it is different from the bundle identifier I put in here. So let me go change that just to make sure that it is the same like that. And the language you should be using is Swift and just follow the settings that I have on the screen there. But Swift is most important. I'm just going to save it on my desktop, pardon the mess. And now that we have our brand new Xcode project, uh, we can add that Google service dash info dot plist file into it. All we need to do is drag it right below this info dot plist. So I have it on my desktop already. Let me just drag it and put it in there. Um, I would recommend to have this checked on copy items if needed because it's going to make a copy of that plist in your project folder. So make sure that uh, this is also checked. It should be by default and click finish. And now it's made a copy of this plist inside the project folder. So if you saved your plist somewhere else, like I do on my desktop here, I'm just going to delete it. Um, just so I know that the actual plist is in the project folder and not the desktop, because if you forget, you may run into an instance where you need to update that plist and you think replacing it on the desktop is going to uh, updated, but it's not. This one in your Xcode project is now a file in your project folder like this. So it's right there. This is the one you would need to replace, not the one on the desktop or wherever you dragged it from. All right, so we've got that now. The next thing we have to do is add the Firebase SDK. Now there are a couple of ways to do it. So let's go to the documentation. There's a button here on your dashboard. You can click on that. It's going to fire it up and let's go to under for iOS, the get started guide. And we are at this point, let's see. So we've done all of this stuff. We added the P list. Now we're adding the SDK. So there are two ways to add it. One way is that you can just download the SDK and it's just a bunch of files. Uh, and then you can download them onto your desktop. Let me see where that is if I, yeah, so there's a section here, integrate without CocoaPods, then you can download the SDK. It's about 100 megabytes. And then you can unzip the file and then you can drag it into your project folder and then you have to add this, this linker flag. Uh, however, there is an easier way to do it and that is using something called CocoaPods. If you're unfamiliar with what that is, well, it's a dependency manager and what that really means in layman's terms is just that it helps you manage bits of reusable code that you can add into your project. Bits of code that are developed by other programmers or other companies um, that add features to your app. And when they make updates to those bits of code, you don't have to re-download the package and you know replace all these files in your project and kind of manage um, which packages are out of date or which um, packages are up to date. Instead with CocoaPods, it does all of that for you. So that sounds wonderful, right? Another benefit is that it's actually pretty easy to set up and use. I actually created another YouTube video um, to show you how to set up CocoaPods on your machine if you don't have it set up already. So I'm going to link to that in the description and also on the screen right now for a couple of seconds. So you can go and watch that in order to set up CocoaPods. But let me also show you how you can do it right now very quickly. So if you go to CocoaPods.org and scroll all the way down to install, all you have to do is open up terminal on your laptop, on your machine, and type this command here. 
So I can't actually do it because I've already got it installed. Or I could I could probably do it and it might just update CocoaPods if there's a new version. But after you uh, do that, it's going to ask you for your administrative password. Once you put in that, uh, it's going to download. It might take a while, so just go grab a coffee, give it 10 minutes, come back, and it should be finished. And that's, yeah, that's basically it. That's how you install CocoaPods. If you actually want to see it in action and to see me install it, then um, check out that YouTube video that I just linked to. Okay, so now I'm going to assume that you have CocoaPods installed. And when you do, go back to Terminal. You're going to want to jump into that folder, your project folder. And let me just navigate to it right now. So you type ls to list out your files, cd folder name to go into that folder and since it's on the desktop now this is my project folder here and I'm going to type in pod init now when I go into my project folder I have this pod file here I'm going to open it up in my text editor which I use here sublime text you can use a different one just text edit and if all of this stuff is kind of over your head right now, um, just be sure to watch that CocoaPods video that I linked to. And if we go back to this documentation right here, it says that you, you do pod Firebase slash core, but we're going to want to also add a different one. So let's add this one first. So I'm going to copy that and inside the pod file, which I opened, you want to put it right here. And if you scroll down a little bit, actually, here, click this link. I want to add this one here as well for the real time database. Okay, I'm going to press Command S to save the file. And then I'm going to go back here to terminal and I'm going to do a pod install command and that's just going to read the pod file here and it's going to download these pods and it's going to install it it was really fast for me because it probably um, I probably already have those somewhere from working on these apps before uh, before recording the video but for you it might actually take a while so again go grab a coffee come back in 10 minutes it should be done and if I go back to the messaging app, you can see that it's created um, all of the pods in here. It's downloaded here. And I have this new XC workspace file, which is the one that I opened from now on and not the Xcode project. So let's open that up. I'm going to close, close that. Okay, let me close everything first and open the XC workspace. There we go. Uh, now, usually what I do, I press Command B to just build the project to make sure that it still builds. Um, and we're going to now want to add the, uh, the initialization code, which if we go back up a little bit, next step is to initialize Firebase in your app. So what we're gonna want to do in the app delegate is import Firebase so we can start using its classes and we call this uh, this type method called configure on this fire app class it's fir app but I'm just gonna call it fire app I'm not sure if that's the way you pronounce it though so going back into our project we're gonna go into the app delegate uh, we're going to import import Firebase here and in here in the did finish launching with options but before the return statement I'm going to do fir app dot configure and just like that we're done now we can start reading and writing data to our uh, firebase database if we go back to the console here but before we do that we're gonna have to in the next lesson build the user interface for our messaging app and then I'm going to explain to you guys how the data is stored in the database. And then we're going to get to actually reading and writing data to the database. So thanks for watching. And if you liked the video, please consider 
giving it a thumbs up, sharing it with someone you know, and subscribing to my YouTube channel for more. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.